Hello and welcome to 3 Minute Gaming, I'm Nathan, and today I'm going to tell you this game's through time and bandwidth. Today's game is Tree Pang 2. Y'all remember Fear? That incredible monolith slow-mo horror shooter? Well, whether you have or haven't, Tree Pang 2 is the spiritual successor to that. Is this the ultimate shooter power fantasy? Let's find out. Tree Pang 2, as mentioned in the intro, is an FPS game very much inspired by Fear that focuses on slow-mo, enhanced mobility, and insane power fantasy. And no, there is no Tree Pang 1, and technically the game is Tree Pang squared, but whatever. You play as 106, essentially essentially a super soldier as part of an elite task force sent down to take down a host of interconnected crime syndicates. These baddies not only have a bunch of dudes to shoot, but also are performing crazy experiments which lead to some genuine horror portions of the game, again similar to Fear. The story is frankly incidental, but is enough to keep you motivated, as well as providing a surprising amount of enemy variety, with human enemies ranging from cultists to special ops stealth guys, as well as big bad monsters and the bosses that control them. But you're here for this game's insane shooting gameplay, and holy cow is this game a power fantasy on anything below hard difficulty. 106 can hold two guns at at once as well as melee, no aiming down sights unless the weapon's scoped, with melee changing if you're running or jumping. He can also break into a full speed slide from standing, which will not only cross distance, but kick enemies up into the air. Speaking of enemies, you can grab most human sized enemies, either using them as a shield, tossing them an insane distance, or reading them with a grenade as an impromptu bomb. The final two powers are where things get crazy, the ability to slow time as well as cloak. Cloak is handy for getting out of sticky situations and will automatically recharge, while slowing time is the game's best bit, as it recharges as you kill enemies, meaning you can get a massive time slow chain if you're vicious enough. Power slide drive by enemies for a multi-kill, or toss a grenade, then shoot it out of the air in slow-mo. This power lets you stare at an otherwise insurmountable odds and laugh. Your carnival of carnage is accentuated by the fact that just about everything in this game explodes like in a John Woo movie. Shooting a book blasts enough pages to fill a library, bottles explode in satisfying glass chunks, drywall flies through the air like confetti, and more. It's very visceral, much like games like Fear or Black. The gameplay itself is split across six story missions, as well as six-ish side missions, always take you to unique locations to destroy a murder in. And all Honestly, that's a gist of Tree Pang 2. It's an insane, fast-paced power fantasy shooter with some visceral combat, satisfying slow-mo, and horror elements. So what do I like about Tree Pang 2? Well, the shooting feels absolutely phenomenal. On normal or below, it's a power fantasy, and on hard and above, it's a fantastic challenge as you test your overpowered skills against equally vicious enemies. And speaking of those enemies, they're not only surprisingly smart, like engaging in squad mechanics and doing stuff like flanking you, but they also have great radio chatter like in Fear, providing some combat hints and some flavor as the last guy standing will often talk about how scared he is of you. And Lastly, the locations and enemies stay fresh over the game's entire runtime, with me never getting bored, and the combat loop and the experience never being anything aside from, holy crap, this is so cool. When it comes to the bad, there aren't really a lot of different guns here. And while you can find parts and customize the weapons, the small arsenal means you're not going to find too many surprises along the way, and is exacerbated by the fact you can only hold two at a time. Additionally, a lot of the side missions are just wave-based defenses or horde, which while fun given the awesomeness of the shooting, gets tired pretty quick, especially compared with the few great horror-based side missions. And lastly, this game's main campaign is just way too too short. Not just because I want more of this excellent gameplay and locations, but also it makes the story itself feel extremely rushed and doesn't really have a very satisfying payout. As you know, I rate games here on a three-point scale, must play, maybe consider, don't bother, and I absolutely think you should play Tree Pang 2, and it is a hidden gem on Steam. I mean, I know a game's gonna be a must-play when I keep saying, wow, this is the most incredible thing ever over and over while grinning ear to ear as I power slide enemies in slow motion. Tree Pang 2 takes all the great gameplay portions of fear, distills and modernizes them, and ends up with one of the most satisfying shooters I've played in in a long time. In a year chock full of insane releases, Tree Pang 2 stands out. And if you enjoy FPS games in any capacity, you need to pick it up. And that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you played Tree Pang 2, have you heard of it? It's currently only on PC, but console soon. So make sure you check it out on your system of choice. But once you've played it, let me know in the comments what you think about it. And until then, go out there and give it a look.